we're back to the eraser in the hand. Remember that from uh, the previous video? Sure you do. The hand, there it is, with the eraser. The pink thing is the eraser. Okay, so here's the, the, we have two situations here. Situation A and situation B. And what we're leading up to here are two different statements of Newton's second law. Okay, we're going to spend a little more time on this one than we did the first law. And uh, on, over here on the left side of the board, we're going to talk about sort of just an intuitive kind of uh, written language, English language kind of statement of Newton's second law. And over here in a moment, I'm going to put, uh, do another sort of thought experiment and uh, come up with the mathematical statement of Newton's second law. Unlike the first statement, I mean the first law, the law of inertia it's sometimes called, the first law, unlike the first law, the second law has a mathematical statement, okay, that it neatly summarizes it all in one nice equation. The first law doesn't really have that. That being said, we are going to talk about here a sort of a colloquial sort of intuitive sense of Newton's second law before we write the more uh, technical mathematical expression for it. So we're back to the eraser, we're back to my hand like this. Okay, so there's my hand holding the eraser. Okay, velocity is constant. And that's true whether the velocity is zero or whether the velocity say may be some constant positive number when I'm moving it up at a constant velocity, constant direction, constant speed. Okay, so velocity here is constant. It doesn't mean that it's zero. It just means that the velocity is constant. So this is one, one, one situation, okay, that conforms to example, I mean, to, to, to part A up here. Okay, there's an example, constant velocity upwards, also constant, constant velocity of zero applies. In both cases, the velocity is constant, whether it's zero or some other number, it doesn't change. Remember, constant means it doesn't change. It doesn't mean that it's zero. It could be zero, but it could be positive two meters per second. It could be negative 17 meters per second. As long as the velocity doesn't change, the velocity is constant. And if the velocity is constant, the acceleration is zero. And notice here in my picture, the forces on the eraser are balanced. There's the force up on the eraser from my hand, again, called the normal force, which we'll bring up again very soon. We'll also talk about why it's called the normal force. Okay, and it's not in contrast to the weird force. Okay, normal has a particular meaning in, in the math world. So there's a normal force up on it, there's, which is in. There's the weight of the eraser down. Those two forces are balanced in this situation. Whether the eraser is moving or not, as long as the velocity is constant, the forces are balanced. Okay. Okay. And, and the acceleration is zero. But suppose we make the forces unbalanced so that they don't equal out to zero when you add them. Okay. And we'll talk more about adding vectors soon, but suppose that we do something very simple and then we release the eraser like that. Now that is part B. That is situation B. Now what we have is a situation where the velocity is not constant. It's going down. Its direction might be constant, but its speed is increasing as it falls at 9.8 meters per second per second. So it is, incre it is falling down. Its velocity is no longer constant and the acceleration is no longer zero, it is now negative g. We're assuming up is positive. Okay. And note also that the forces are unbalanced. There's no longer a normal force up on the eraser to balance out the weight. Okay. So when you have unbalanced forces, you have non-constant velocity, which means you have an acceleration that is no longer zero. Unbalanced forces cause acceleration. 
unbalanced forces cause acceleration. Not just, not, not, not forces, unbalanced forces cause acceleration. This is a colloquial kind of intuitive statement of Newton's second law. Unbalanced forces cause acceleration. Whenever you see an acceleration anywhere, whether it's an automobile going down the street going faster and faster and faster, or it's a kid on a merry-go-round going in circles, okay, or it's a baseball moving one way and then hit by a bat the other direction, wherever there is an acceleration, there are unbalanced forces, okay? Unbalanced forces cause accelerations. And you can go backwards. Whenever you see an acceleration, you know the un forces are unbalanced. Or if you're driving in your car and your speedometer is going up. Or if you're going around a corner, you're having an acceleration, which means the forces on the car are unbalanced at that point. So that's the colloquial statement of Newton's second law. Unbalanced forces cause accelerations. Okay. Now, suppose we have something a little bit different. Suppose we have a situation, we have a no friction situation. We're just going to, we'll bring friction in, right? Friction's coming, but for now we're going to ignore friction. And now we're going to put our block or our eraser or whatever on a perfectly smooth, frictionless. Sometimes the word uses the word smooth to mean frictionless. Okay, surface. And we've got a block here of some mass M. And we're going to push on it with a force. Okay. Now there are vertical forces working also. Normal force, weight, and so forth, but we're not going to worry about those right now. We're just going to think about the force pushing on the mass. And what happens when we for, when we push on the for, uh, on the uh, mass with a force? Is this force balanced by anything? Anything pushing back against it? Right to balance forces, they have to be in opposite directions. Okay. To balance forces, they can't both be in the same direction and be balanced. They have to be in opposite directions. One's got to be positive. One's got to be negative to balance out. Like here, one was positive. The normal force is positive, the weight was negative, up, down. So those two, those two forces balanced. But here there is no force back this way to balance this. So what are we going to get if we have an unbalanced force here? Yes, indeed, we're going to get an acceleration. And the acceleration is going to be that way. So as long as we're pushing with the force F, on this mass, we're going to get an acceleration to the right. And here's some observations we have made in the lab that actually Galileo, I mean not Galileo, but Galileo, yeah, a little bit of Galileo, but also Newton discovered in the lab basically this. The larger the force, number one, the larger the force, which one am I doing first? The greater, comma, the, the larger the acceleration. In other words, acceleration that you get here, actually I, should, I need to draw, uh, be very careful about these, these are both vectors, right? The acceleration that you get is proportional to the force. Okay. Actually, let's just let's just let's just do this with just to keep things simple. Let's just talk about the magnitudes. They're obviously in the same direction here. I think I want to get complicate things a little bit much if I if if, if I put in vector signs right now. Let's think about this: the magnitudes of the forces in the acceleration. So we push to the right with a force F. You're going to get an acceleration A. Turns out that a is proportional to F. This little fish sign that's like a little alpha, like a little fish or something there, that means proportional to. Doesn't mean equal. It means proportional to. 
which means if you double one, you double the other. If you cut one down, if you cut one by 40%, you cut the other by 40%. Okay? If you reverse the direction of one, you reverse the direction of the other. If you change one, you're going to change the other by the same fraction, by the, by the same factor. So if you increase your acceleration by 271%, you increase, I'm sorry, if you increase the force by 271%, you increase the acceleration by 271%. So if this is 2F, that becomes 2A. If this is 1 third F, that becomes 1 third A. They scale together. They're not equal. They're different units, but they scale together. If one gets big, the other one gets big by the same factor. Other one, if one gets small, the other one gets small by the same factor. Okay. People also uh, discovered that the larger the force, I mean the larger the mass, I should say, the smaller the acceleration. Okay. The larger the mass, the smaller. The so basically is this. Suppose we have a an eraser here with a mass of just, let's say, a kilogram, which is way heavier than this, but let's say it has a mass of a kilogram, and we push it with a certain force. It'll take off with a certain acceleration. But now if we triple the mass of this thing and push it with the same force, it's not going to go as quickly. The acceleration is not going to be as high. Imagine having like a little uh, mouse on ice skates and an elephant on ice skates, and you give them both the same little kick. The mouse is going to take off, right? You're going to kick the elephant, the elephant's not going to go at all. Even though you're giving them the same kick, the larger the mass, the smaller the acceleration. So the acceleration of the elephant's going to be basically zero, but the acceleration of the mouse is going to be huge. It's going to ding, take off down the ice. Okay. So the way we write this, is the acceleration is proportional to 1 over the mass. The larger the mass, the smaller the acceleration. Okay. Now these can be combined into a single equation. A equals F over M. Or if we rearrange it, F equals M A. Okay. Let me check my notes here. So okay, we're going to pick this up right here. We're going to pick it the next lecture up with this right here. Okay, we're not done with it yet. We're not done. I just don't want to make this video go too long. If, if, if I take the next step, it'll take another 10 minutes or so. And I don't want that for me. I don't want that for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to pigeonhole this thing right here, F equals MA, and come back to it. I hope that these two points here are intuitive. The stronger you push the mass M, the higher it's going to accelerate. I give it a little kick. It's not, going to go, it's not going to accelerate much, but if you give it a strong kick, it'll accelerate a lot. If you have a small mass and give it some kick, it'll accelerate less than if there's a big mass that you give the same kick. Okay, So that is F equals MA. Now we're going to address this up a little bit and say a little more about it and do an example of this in the next video. Boom. <laughs>